Hello and welcome to Gardening at 58 North. So in this video I'd like to give you guys an update on my tomato plants here and also tell you a bit about tomato blight as well because these are about to get decimated by tomato blight unfortunately. So these are my tumbling tom tomatoes. They're a type of determinate tomato, also known as a bush tomato. What that means is they grow a certain size, then they produce lots of flowers and they don't grow anymore. So they're quite good as a compact plant. You also get quite a heavy crop in a small location and you get a shorter season. So if you don't have a very long growing season, they're quite a good um, type of tomato to go with. This variety is called Tumbling Tom, so it has kind of cherry sized tomatoes uh, that hang down from the plant, and there's just a few of them starting now. But the problem I have at the moment is I've got tomato blight. I had these at my parents' polytunnel. It was very humid in there, and that's perfect conditions for tomato blight to start setting in. So the tomato blight started there. I brought them over here. They keep the tomato blight away from my parents' tomatoes as well. But, um, the, the, the blight has continued to spread and so what I need to do now is start picking out some of the dead leaves and stop it from spreading any further. If I had the time, I should have, what I should have done is pick out all the dead leaves as soon as I saw them. That would have really reduced the spread. There's not much you can do to completely stop it, but you can at least reduce it once it's in your area. There's not much you can do about tomato blight. It's just going to eventually get your potatoes and your tomato plants and slowly kill them off. So I'll give you a close up now of what it looks like and the, the what early the warning signs to look out for when it comes to tomato blight. So I've zoomed into this leaf here to give you an early example of what tomato look, blight looked like when it first starts. And this type of tomato blight is known as late blight, it's the type that affects us most in the UK. So it survives over winter in old potatoes that are in the field still or in the garden or you can even survive in compost if, it's been, uh, if there's been infected material put into the compost. What happens it then infects the new uh, growth in spring. It doesn't normally cause a big problem in your garden unless you got it quite badly but then what happens is as it infects the new growth it then starts letting off lots of spores which the wind then carries into the local area so even a few miles away you can, the spores can be carried away if it's quite strong wind and infect your uh, potato plant or tomato plant. So the first signs are going to be something like this. So I've zoomed into this leaf here. What will happen is the edge of the leaf will start to die off. You'll get a discoloration as well in the in the foliage what will then happen the material will then start to spread in so the fungus has basically infected the leaf it's killed the leaf but it's now following along the stem of the plant to infect more of the leaf so this is actually the leaf stem here you can see it's starting to die off these leaves are still alive but it's starting to spread in so if you still at this early stage you can get it before it actually gets into the main part of the plant you don't want to just cut off the dead section you also want to cut off a small bit of the, the live section as well to make sure there's not any infection there to stop it spreading into the main stem. So you can just cut it off like this. That's to stop it from spreading any further. The infected material, try not to let it touch any of the other bits of the plant if you can. It's not the end of the world though because luckily with, the, with uh, this type of blight it has to be in contact with water. So if the spores land on the plant and the plant is dry, the spores aren't going to cause any more infection they just sit on the surface they have to actually have water touching the stems to then get into the stems so you're actually going to be okay if you can keep the foliage dry but in high humidity or if you have rainfall that stays wet or when you're watering it gets wet that's when the spores can then take hold and cause damage so i'm just going to pan around to the left now so you can see a stem that's starting to get infected from the flowers down so you can, you can see in this stem, what's happened is the flowers have become infected. It's now spreading down the stem and it's affecting the main stem there. What that will do is it will continue going down to the roots. Once it gets to the roots, your plant is pretty much dead. And I'll, exp uh, I'll uh, pan over now to a more infected stem, which has got lots of mold spores starting to appear. It's those spores that then travel and attack the other plants nearby. So this section of stem has got quite an active uh, bit of infection going on at the moment. You can see there's actually growth from the mold spores here, and that's basically starting to spread um, its, itself uh, through the air. So what you have on the right here is, um, what's happened here is it's probably been infected by this leaf, one of these leaves here. The infection has travelled along the leaf stem, got to the main stem, the infection has then branched in either direction. It's killed off all the stem at the top, lower down it's starting to head towards the roots, and it's, so what's going to happen is it's going to keep spreading but as this is at an active sporing stage you can see on the surface there's lots of mold spores which have formed as soon as a raindrop hits that or if um, the wind blows it that's going to travel and affect more material so if the raindrop does hit this part of the mold what will happen is it will pick up the mold spores that raindrop will, will splash onto a nearby stem and then straight away the mold spores can start getting to work going into the, the nearby healthy stem 
further transmitting the uh, infection to the rest of the plant. So what I need to do here is carefully cut out this section and make sure that I try not to let the mold spores get anywhere. As I said before, as it doesn't spread unless there's water, it's not a big problem, but I do need to make sure there's as little water on this plant as possible, make sure the spores then can't actually get into the stem. So you can see further down on this plant, the stem's actually looking quite healthy. So I want to cut that off quite low down to make sure that there's not any infection deeper inside the stem. And as there's no side branches here, I might as well cut this off right at the base where it joins the rest of the plant. So I'm just going to cut it off down here and then carefully remove this section. So this plant here is my most infected plant at the moment. It's got some really quite bad infection going on. So there's this stem here, which has started to spread up and down from the stem. It's probably infected originally on one of these leaves further down. And you can see here there's a nice size shoot. It would be nice to keep that, but the infection is right next to the size shoot. If I didn't cut it off right down here, what might happen is the infection could still linger and go further down. So I'm going to cut that off. But I'd also like to use this plant as an example of how the, even though the stems are attacked, the, 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 uh, the stems at the end can continue to grow. So this one, for example, is uh, you can see here, the center is completely died, pretty much completely dead, completely covered in infection. But there's a side branch here coming off and in between the side branch and the roots, it's actually an infected part of stem. But the side branch doesn't look too bad, it's still flowering. And some of these have actually got healthy growth on them even with infection further down, and some of them also have tomatoes forming. So it can be quite misleading. If you're, if you're just looking at the surface of the plant, you might see the top end of the growth. It looks healthy enough, but then further down, you'll notice it's rotting. So you need to keep an eye out, even though the tops might look healthy, look further down, make sure there's no rotting stems further down, because you could have an infection and you just don't know it because it's further away from the, uh, the rest of the plant. And it seems to take a while between getting infected and the ends completely dying off. But what will happen here, this might be healthy for another week or two, but then what will happen is the, the sap coming up the stem will be completely cut off by the fungus and then this whole, everything above the infection will die. And if you're not careful, the infection will continue to spread down, get into the roots, and once it's in the roots, the entire plant will die. So it can be quite catastrophic for your crop. Um, I'm certainly going to lose most of my crop, unfortunately. The plant is all, these plants have already lost most of their leaves, so there's not a lot of um, photosynthesis going on to kind of build up their energy and put energy into the tomatoes. So I'm not gonna get a massive crop. I'll pan around now though, because I do have some nice tomatoes for me on some of the plants. So you can see this one here, this has got quite a few nice green tomatoes. I'll just give you a close up now of, of the, uh, the individual tomatoes. So I was looking forward to a nice crop of tomatoes. I'm not sure if I'm going to get any. Um, this one's probably about the full size now. So because this tomato is pretty much at its full size already, it means I probably can get it to ripen, but it might have to take it off the plant and ripen on, on a Sunday windowsill or next to some, to some bananas to encourage it to ripen off the plant because if I leave it on the plant it could get the, um, the blight. The blight also infects the, the fruit. If it gets into the fruit, the fruit will go rotting quite quickly. It'll get really scabby appearance and get covered in mold. So you don't want to eat any other blighted fruit. But you can still eat uh, tomatoes from the plants as long as the fruit itself isn't infected. So I'll probably, if I find this, the, uh, the infection spreading further, I will harvest them and just wipe them off the plants and hopefully that will give me a bit of a crop even though the rest of the plant has died and I've lost most of the tomatoes. So what I'm going to do now is try and save what's left of my plants and see if I can completely stop the infection from spreading although to be honest it's not likely I'm probably going to have to remove a lot of the plants and the infection is still around but at least if I remove all the dead material and infection material what that will do is there's less spores going around so the infection will spread less quickly. And also, I'm going to take a lot of the congestion out of the plant. That's better, I mean there'll be better airflow. So even if water does get splashed on the plant, it might evaporate quickly enough that the spores don't have time to then penetrate the stems. Because if they get splashed with water and they dry out within a few minutes, that's not a problem. The spores can't penetrate the stems. But if they stay wet for a long time, so several hours, then they can get infected. So the idea is here, move all the dead material that's an, and also all the infected material that will mean there's less spores around, but also removing that material means there's more airflow in the plant, and if it does get water on it, it's less likely to get infected. So I'll go ahead and do that now. I'll come back to you at the end of the video once I've, covered, once I've cleaned up the plants and we'll see what's left of them.
So that's been now removed all the dead and infection material. As you can see, there's a lot less branches now on the plants. There was quite a lot of material that did have to come off, unfortunately. And there's, there was lots of tomatoes as well. I've kept the larger ones. These ones have a chance that they might ripen. There was also a lot of smaller ones as well. But the, uh, the smaller ones were so young that even if I put them on a sunny windowsill, they're probably not that likely to get uh, to germinate. So just these ones at the moment. But um, when it comes to uh, tomato blight, there's a couple of other things to add about tomato blight. Um, there's a few different ways that you can keep this at bay. So if you do get it, make sure any material that you, t that you t take away at the end of the year or as you're pruning the infectious material away, make sure it's not composted, take it and incinerate it or put it in the, your landfill rubbish. You don't want to have it where it can infect other places. So ideally incinerate it or if you do bury it as compost in the garden, bury it very deep so that by the time anyone ever digs that up, it's not going to be viable to infect anywhere. The last thing you want to do is leave it in your garden all winter to, to uh, the rest and spread and infect next year or put it in your compost where if it's not hot enough in the compost it'll come back. If you can't incinerate it, another good place is probably your local green waste recycling. It might be good to check with them if they're happy to take infected material but usually they compost it at such high temperatures that, that kills off any of the infection so that should be okay but you should probably check just before you do that. So in some countries you can use chemical fungicides to treat tomato blight. Here in the UK there's nothing available to the uh, average gardener. Commercial growers do have some things that they can spray on them, but the average gardener in the UK doesn't have any chemicals, so there isn't anything you can treat it with. But in your country, check, you might have some kind of fungicide or preventative chemical that you can use to keep the tomato blight at bay. So when it comes to looking after the plant, um, if you do know your area is bad for tomato blight, what you can do is make sure there's always good airflow around the plants so that uh, any water doesn't stay on the leaves for a long time and it can dry quite easily. If, it's in, if you have a uh, greenhouse or a polytunnel, make sure it's well ventilated. You don't want condensation forming and then dripping onto the plants, causing them to get wet that way. When it comes to watering, make sure you just water the soil. Don't get any water on the leaves. And you can also go for re resistant varieties. There are quite a few varieties now which are resistant to tomato blight. Most of them aren't completely immune, but they'll just slow the infection. So if they do get infected, they won't decimate the whole plant straight away like you can with some varieties. It will be able to deal with it. It'll eventually kill the plant, but it will be right at the end of the season. So you should still get a decent crop. There are one or two new varieties which are supposed to be completely blight resistant. So they might be worth trying out. Those plants have been specially bred so that they can completely withstand the blight attack. And there won't really so much sign of infection. They'll just be able to grow happily as if nothing's going on. And you should still get a good crop with that. So what I'm going to do now with these is I'm just going to make sure that they don't get too uh, damp when I'm watering them. I don't want any water on the foliage. Make sure it's well aired and we don't get any condensation in this conservatory. I'm going to keep them as happy as I can. Keep them nice and warm. If they're stressed, they're more likely to get infected and the infection will grow spread faster. So I'll keep them well fed in a sunny position. The sunshine also helps because they'll dry out faster. So that's all for this video. I might give you guys an update uh, in a few months time if these are still alive. If there's no update, either I've been too busy or these have died from the blight. What I will do though is I'll check this every couple of days. Any infection that I see starting to appear, I will then remove that to stop any spread from continuing to, uh, to reinfect other parts of the plant. So that's all for this video. Hopefully it's been helpful if some of you have got tomato blight. It is quite a disappointment when it comes into the, the, uh, the greenhouse or the polytunnel. It can decimate a plant. But following these steps, hopefully you'll be able to keep the blight at bay. And if it does arrive, you'll be able to stop it from spreading too quickly.